Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to install the uh, GitHub Copilot Chat plugin in IntelliJ. So if you just type here how to install GitHub Copilot in IntelliJ and head over GitHub, there's pretty good documentation on the requirements. So basically for IntelliJ IDEA, uh, the requirement is that you need to have either a GitHub Copilot individual subscription or be part of an organization that has the subscription. And then, I mean, it's pretty straightforward to install. I'm going to show an IntelliJ, but I'm here in GitHub because I just want to show that after you actually install the plugin, you need to log into GitHub. So tools, GitHub Copilot, log into GitHub, and then you're going to get this pop-up where you're going to, you know, copy this code and then head over to this link and copy and paste the code and you should be good to go. All right, so let's get started. So let's create a new project. Let's call it, yeah, that's kind of what I want. Horizon Reservation System, I wanna use Maven and I'm gonna use the, this artifact ID and Maven, this uh, wizard is gonna create a Maven archetype. I don't, I'm not gonna bother creating a Git repo. So let's just create this. So we have a successful build. Okay, so the way you install the Copilot plugin is basically go to files and then settings and then plugins, click on marketplace. And then here you type GitHub, GitHub Copilot there. So as I say, I already have it installed, but basically you click install and then you restart the IDE. And then as I show with you on the github.com instructions, you're gonna have to log in, okay? So you come to tools, GitHub Copilot, and then you log in. So if, the, if you are able to correctly install the plugin and link it to your GitHub Copilot subscription account, you will see on the status bar here, this uh, GitHub icon. And if you click on it, you will see status ready. So if you see status ready, then it means that the plugin is correctly installed and it's ready to use because it's linked with your GitHub Copilot account, okay? So within this pop-up menu, as you can see, you can log out. There is a bunch of menu items for documentation. You can look up the GitHub co keyboard shortcuts, which is, you know, a nice thing to know. You can obviously open the chat window which we are obviously going to use extensively for this uh, small project. Let me just close it. Let's go to the, uh, you can disable the completions globally or for, uh, it says for XML, which is a bit strange. Anyway, let's open settings as I wanna show you what sort of settings we have here. So here you can go to your GitHub Copilot subscription account. If you are behind an HTTP proxy, you can at the settings here because remember GitHub Copilot chat uses you know an LLM remotely so it needs obviously you know HTTP access to the remote LLM server okay so for our project we obviously want Java so so let's learn the keyboard shortcuts of you know GitHub Copilot plugin so like I said I'm on Windows the keyboard shortcuts for Windows are the same as Linux so one issue that you can see is that there may be a conflict between the keyboard shortcuts for GitHub Copilot and IntelliJ. I and mean, obviously Alt-Enter is the main suggestions, you know, context sessions for IntelliJ and that conflicts with that. So that's not gonna work. So either you remap the action to open the chat or you can just go to tools, GitHub Copilot, and then open GitHub Copilot chat, okay? You can do that. Notice that Control Shift C, if you type that also, it's not gonna work to open the chat because it's mapped to another action in IntelliJ. This is really not a problem usually because I use the actions to open the chat. And here I type, you know, GitHub Copilot, right? Chat. So I do that. Now I have it here, you know, and then I can maximize it, minimize it, and then, you know, I can just escape, Control Shift 12, and I have the editor. So, and now that I've opened, I can just go back to action, GCC, and boom, I have it there. So it works. But if that bothers you, then you have to, 
you know, choose a different actions. I have this person class, then how do I generate suggestions? Well, alt backslash generate suggestion, as you can see. And now that I have this suggestion, if I tab, as you see here, it's going to accept the suggestions, right? Okay. So I can undo. And if I click escape, then, you know, it dismisses the suggestion. Okay. So let's do it again. So now if I type alt, so now I have this ghost suggestion, let's type alt close curly braces. So there are, so you see how the suggestions are changing. So I'm showing the next suggestion. So I guess it is the first option shows the getters and setters for the name and age. And if I keep cycling through, I'm going backwards or forwards. It just shows the constructor and the fields. Okay. All right. So that's how the keyboard, there is another thing which you can do. You can do control arrow and it basically individually accepts each suggestion, right? You see how so obviously you can go forwards and backwards. If you go backwards, then it kind of, you know, stops, but you might have to do alt backslash. Yeah. To generate, and then you can keep going. All right. So this is if you want to really be very precise or picky in what you want to keep and what you don't want to pick. Okay. So these are the keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Now, so you know the basics of the keyboard shortcuts for your platform. So within the Copilot chat, there are a few, you know, things that you can do. So one is basically to move the window. You know, you can move to say the left hand side, if it's more convenient to you. You know, I don't mind having it on the right top. It's okay. I'm kind of used to using like this, but you know, you can obviously float it. It does need to be docked and so on. So you can start a new chat. You can look at the chat hist at conversation history. And here, if you type forward slash, then, you know, you have a bunch of actions here to generate tests. For example, can you generate tests? If I click enter, then you should generate the tests for, you know, for the person class. So it's fully aware of the context, i.e. of the tab that is currently open and it's able to generate the tests, right? So the references is basically the context, right? So you can actually, it's usually pretty smart in knowing the reference that it needs to use, which is basically the kind of the tabs that are open and related classes, but you can explicitly add a reference here, right? Uh, that it may not have used. So this may be useful if you see that you're not getting the right uh, suggestion, you might need to add more references. So I basically want to play with a simple, you know, application like a restaurant reservation system. Very simple. I'm, you know, it's not going to have a persistence like with a database. It's not going to have a user interface, something very simple. And, you know, it's your standard restaurant reservation system that has, you know, a very simple API here to add a reservation, to modify it and to cancel it. And the reservation is, you know, has a, a unique ID, has an, a reference to a, a unique restaurant ID here. So restaurant ID equals this uh, ID here on the restaurant object. It has a name, your name, your phone number, the party, the number of people in the reservation, the date and the time. Okay. So that's the reservation. That is the object that is created by add reservation. You can obviously modify it. Say you want to change the party or the date or the time you can remove the reservation. And basically, you know, you can use a reservations object to you know, that's going to keep some kind of, you know, list organized by date. This is actually a map. And then you have a restaurant manager, which manages restaurants, right? Adds, removes and modifies restaurants, right? Let's start with a, an interface called restaurant manager. And this is going to be an interface. And, you know, let's basically add the, our API here. So add restaurant. Nice. So we have a nice completion here, name and address. That's cool. So remember, we're going to have a capacity, a local time for the open, a local time for the uh, close. And we're going to have a local date time for the closures. So this is going to be actually a list of, oops, 
actually I just need a local date I don't need the time of closures okay let's import that and import a list so this API is going to return a unique restaurant ID okay so obviously we're going to have a, a modify restaurant here is going to take a restaurant ID and last but not least we're going to have a cancel or actually remove restaurant okay restaurant yeah so you see it gave me the restaurant ID so this is how you know you get the feel of how github copilot is uh, you know assisting you okay so I have this interface now let's open github copilot and see uh, let's open the chat and see how it can actually assist us with this all right so now I wanted to generate a class that implements this interface but you know there are a few constraints that I want you know the github copilot chat to observe so I'm going to tell it implement the restaurant restaurant manager interface okay following these constraints okay all right so what are the constraints I just basically you know paste the constraints here constraint number one all the input parameters must be non-null and semantically validated for example the capacity parameter must be a positive number and the closures list which is this list here right this guy must refer to dates in the future okay because this is the dates where the restaurant is going to be closed so when you add or modify a restaurant this list of dates need to be dates in the future okay so the second constraint that I want GitHub Copilot to observe is that the restaurant must be open for at least eight hours and the close time must be strictly after open the third constraint is that the validation failures for example null parameters or dates in the past must generate a runtime exception with a detailed error message okay and last but not least constraint number four the modify restaurant method can be implemented simply by removing and adding a new restaurant so this is very specific requirements or constraints and that's what you need to really try to do try to be as specific as possible with the with the copilot chat because that's kind of the best usually that yields best results so let's see what copilot came up with so it has here a nice you know description of uh, what it actually did so yeah i created a restaurant that's a good one create a restaurant class with the properties fields name address capacity open close that's a good one it obviously implement the interface this is the main thing i told it to do and there is here a nice hash map to store the restaurants cool let's take a look at the actual code that it generated I have a restaurant manager implements this. There is a nice restaurant map that maps a unique restaurant IDs to a restaurant object. So let's see. Okay, so there is a validating puts method here. Let's see what validating puts does. Okay, so if the fields are null, input parameters cannot be null. Okay, fair enough. And then if capacity is zero or negative, capacity positive, I like that. And then if the open is after the close, uh -huh, or open plus eight hours is after the close. So that's cool. Uh, remove restaurant, remove the restaurant from the hash map. And I told it to implement modify and just by removing and adding a new restaurant, okay? Cool. And let's look at the restaurant class. That's nice. He used the UUI ID to create a, a unique ID. I like that. And there is a get ID getter. That's cool. So I like this. So let's so let's copy this code block. And let's go here to the menu. And let's just paste that. So we have this class. Yeah, we obviously need the restaurant class. So let's get the restaurant cloud this is where this plugin is not i mean i've seen videos where the integration with the uh, github copilot chat with with the id is better like in vs code because i feel i find that this sort of going to github copilot chat and coming back to the ID is a little bit disruptive especially when you are you know like generating new classes or interfaces or what have you because you can't really insert the code right you have to copy and then you have to close and then you have to come to the package and then paste so you know it's a little bit disruptive but anyway so like i said one thing that i don't 
not too crazy here is that I would like to see a specific error message to know exactly what input parameter is null. So let's go back to the chat window and see whether we can improve this. So improve the validate input null check with specific error message for each input parameter. Let's see what it can do for us here. I'm still not 100% happy with this because it's not including the actual parameters for these checks like I told it I told it to do. So let's see whether I'm going to do it here and hopefully it's going to learn and do it for the next one. And let's see whether he can do it for us here. So okay, let's see if he can do it for us format. Yeah. Exactly. So you see it learned what I did before and it kind of fixed it for us. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this restaurant manager implementation. Let's go to the restaurant class. All right, so let's in the restaurant class, what I want to do is implement a method that the reservation system will check whether the restaurant is open because see the restaurant has closure dates. So if you're trying to make a reservation when the restaurant is closed, then you know, you need to ask the restaurant whether this is a valid date. This, this, this reservation should not proceed. Also, the, re the restaurant has open and close hours, say from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. And, you know, the reservation, if it's before 9 a.m. or say close to the closing time, then you need to fail the validation as well. So let's see what Copilot is able to do here. So it's validating the date parameter and the hours. So let's accept everything and see. So it's validating the date, the duration. So if any, there is any match here on the closures. Okay, cool, returns false. And then it gets the time of the reservation and the end time. And this is perfect, okay? Okay, so we have generated the restaurant manager and restaurant interface in class. So now let's uh, generate the reservation class and all the add reservation, modify reservation and remove reservation classes and API. So let's create a new interface called reservation system. And this is an interface. Okay, so in here, let's create a add reservation Okay, so great auto completion by, by Copilot. The duration we don't need to pass in here because it defaults to uh, two hours. So add reservation, let's add modify reservation, which takes a reservation ID. Okay. And then actually we just need a cancel reservation and great auto, auto completion again. Okay, so now that we have our interface, let's go to Copilot and ask it to generate an implementation for this class following a set of constraints. In the same manner we did for the implementation of the restaurant manager interface. So I have here a new chat. So let's see, implement this interface following these constraints. Okay, so let's see a reservation. Okay, I don't need this. This is repeated. So a reservation has a duration of two hours. This is a simplification of the problem, but let's use it. Um, so for example, if you book for say a table for say 1 p.m., then by three you will be done. And this is regardless of the party size. I mean, in practice, you can imagine that a party size of, say, 10 people will take longer than a party size of just two. But, you know, let's just keep this a simplification. The other requirement is that a reservation cannot be made on a date when the restaurant is closed. So notice that the reservation here, when you add a reservation, has a date time. Okay, so a day and then a time. So we're going to use that field for that and also for this third requirement that, you know, obviously the time that you, when the reservation starts and ends, so start plus two hours, needs to be within restaurant working hours. Fourth, a reservation cannot be made if this new reservation's party size 
plus all the existing overlapping reservations party size exceeds the restaurant capacity and two reservations overlap if they intersect each other in the restaurant's open timeline. So there's a bit of a mouthful. Let's look at the diagram to see what I mean by this point four. All right, so this is the sort of, you know, a diagram of the reservations on the timeline. So this timeline here is the open and the close time of the restaurant. So this is the operating hours of the restaurant. And each of these intervals or brackets are reservations. So notice that all of them have the same length because again, we're using a simplification where each reservation, all reservation have the same duration, two hours. So this reservation is invalid. IR stands for invalid reservation because the start time is before the open. Likewise, this is also invalid because the end time is after the close. So R3, 4 and 5 are existing reservations and NR stands for new reservation. This is a new reservation that we are trying to book. What I'm just highlighting here is how, what I mean by overlapping. So, I mean, it's pretty clear what overlapping means, but you know, NR overlaps with R5, with R4 and R3. And that's kind of what I'm trying to tell Copilot to, uh, you know, try to validate or follow this constraint. Okay. We will, re we will revisit this when we actually implement this algorithm. All right, so five, all input parameters must be known null and semantically validated. By semantically, I mean, for example, the phone number parameter must be a valid US phone number and the restaurant ID parameter must refer to an existing restaurant with that ID. Okay, so maybe here, based on the experience we've had with the restaurant bank, all right, so six, validation fail as much as rate of runtime exception with detailed error message containing the input parameter that failed validation. So use string format for this implementation. You know, that's kind of what we learn from the restaurant implementation class and, and restaurant manager. A modified reservation, just like on the modified restaurant, can be implemented simply by canceling and adding a new reservation. So let's see what GitHub can do with this. All right, so let's see what we have here. So it generated a reservation class with the fields that we need, and it's using the UUID to generate a unique ID. So this is good. And the actual implementation of the interface, it's using a map of presumably the reservation ID to a list of reservations, or that Okay, no, that's actually the restaurant ID. Yeah, that's that's a nice mapping. And then we have a restaurant manager. So this implementation is in terms of the restaurant manager and there is a nice dependency injection here to get restaurant manager object. This is good. So let's look at this implementation. So at reservation, we are validating it. We're gonna take a look at that shortly. And then it's using the, man the restaurant manager to get the restaurant, giving the restaurant ID, and then it's doing a validation and awesome. See, this is really cool. So it's using string format as was the hint we gave it. So again, be very specific when working with these tools powered by LLMs. So this is good. So we have a very descriptive error message. This is nice. And then it's, this is also good. It's using the ease reservation date time valid that we implemented before to validate that the, uh, you know, that the time and date of the reservation is valid as per the restaurant closure and operating hours and capacity. Yes. If the capacity exceeds or exceeded, then, you know, we cannot make the uh, reservation. Otherwise, if all of these validations pass, then it creates a new reservation object and then it associated with the map of reservations for that restaurant and it's using a nice computative absent. So computative absent, if there is no mapping for this restaurant ID, it's going to create a new mapping and return the empty list to which we add the new reservation. Otherwise, it just returns the existing list and then we add reservations to that list and then it returns the ID and then modifies a simple implementation in terms of cancel and adding a new one and then cancel reservations. So 
we are actually iterating over all of the reservations and then removing if that reservation matches the reservation ID. So clearly this is not very efficient. We're going to see if we can make this more efficient. Validating puts, okay, it just gave up on, on generating this method. All right, so this is not bad, but I think we can do better. So let's look at this capacity exceeded and see what Copilot did here. So this is a pretty good implementation based on that requirement here. So if you recall, by the way, if you want to go to the history of prompts, just come here and type up or down. Okay. And it shows you the previous prompts. So this is the prompt uh, point four here, this requirement that led to this implementation. So this is a pretty good, you know, first try. Okay. So let's see what Pilot did here. So remember, notice reservations is a map of restaurant ID to the list of reservations for that restaurant, right? So what Copilot is doing here is it is getting a stream, okay, of all the reservations for that restaurant. And then it's filtering the ones that basically overlap with this new reservation we're trying to book. Okay, so if this reservation date time is before the end time, right, and this reservation's end time is, bef is after the date time, okay, of the new one, then they overlap. And then it's calculating here, a, you know, a list of those reservations. And then it's summing the total party size, right, of this overlapping. And then it adds the party size of the new one. And if that exceeds the capacity, then, you know, it's going to return true. Okay. Let's see graphically what is the problem with this implementation. So basically what uh, Copilot did here is it's, it's pretty much adding all of these R3, R4, R5, and R, and R to a, s a single list, right? And then summing all of the party sizes of these four reservations, okay, the three existing and the new one, and then comparing that to the restaurant capacity. And if that is less than the capacity returns true, otherwise less than or equal, otherwise if it's greater, then it returns false. Okay. But notice that this does not work, that this implementation has a bug. And the bug is that even though all of these reservations overlap R3, R4, and R5, notice that R5 does not overlap with R3. Okay. So counting R5 in this group is basically wrong, right? What we really want to do is we want to create a set of R3, R4, and NR. So this is one set where you have these three guys really overlapping, okay? And then you want another set of NR, R5, and R4, right? So basically the algorithm needs to be a bit more clever than what we have there and construct two separate sets for this specific scenario. So if you look at the implementation here, you will see that the current data structure we have, it's not ideal for, for this algorithm. So notice that we have a mapping of the restaurant ID to the reservation list, right? This would be very inefficient, especially if you have a lot of reservations for a particular restaurant, right? So this will be very inefficient to iterate over each reservation to try to find, you know, the ones that overlap, you know, li like you see here, right? Okay. So this is a linear operation. So it will be much more efficient if we have a list of reservations sorted, right? Say by, by date. All right. So let's use this requirement, which is driven by this, you know, this is capacity exceeded that I showed you graphically. Let's try to use this prompt to see whether Copilot can improve, you know, this mapping. Okay. All right, so I'm telling it for enhance, further enhance the implementation by introducing a sorted data structure for the reservation list, okay? So let's say here to be more clear, sorted by reservations start time, 
okay that that allows for the following so first we want a quick lookup of a reservation by its id so notice that we have two requirements basically first again if you look here we want to be able to iterate over these reservations right not in a linear fashion but in a you know log n fashion if this data structure is sorted okay and then also because it's sorted like i said as soon as we find an existing reservations whose start time right is greater than this you know end date time which is date time plus two then we can immediately back out of here so we need some sort of sort you know implementation of reservations but also remember that we need to be able to cancel and modify a reservation and those two operations cancellation and modification requires a lookup of a reservation by its id and you can see here that this is very inefficient right especially if you have a large number of reservations okay so we want some mapping of a reservation id to a reservation okay so that's basically what i'm telling you okay quick lookup of a reservation by its id and i'm telling you why i need it and then you know binary search not necessarily but you know let's see what is going to come with this of an intersecting reservation inside the list giving a new reservation okay and i'm telling it to keep the mapping of reservation id okay because this is it's useful so let's see what it comes up with okay so this is kind of the data structure that i wanted right so again reservations by id enables a quick lookup of cancel modification reservations by time uh, let's just close this reservation by time so i have a mapping of the reservation id to a sorted you know data structure sorted set of reservation and notice that it actually implemented a reservations in terms of a comparable interface using the correct field which is a requirement for objects that are stored on a tree set so i like that so let's copy this and let's go here and paste okay let's go to copilot and let's get this reservation system paste okay so reservation okay we got a comparable implementation and reservation system there are some errors here well let's create a method in the restaurant manager class okay perfect and let's go to the implementation let's add the method yep let's implement it if you remove this then yeah copilot just basically generates the implementation for you so let's go back to the reservation there is another issue somewhere here yeah so we need to add a getter here and on reservation again copilot will implement it for us oh, tab okay okay all right so what else we have here there is another issue restaurant id okay let's create the method there method i need to have a method on the reservation which i'm gonna call public boolean intersects with okay and it's gonna get another reservation oh man this is just amazing <laughs> this is incredible so intersects with other res so this is just you know this implementation is correct i mean copilot this is just amazing so it if if these reservations start time right is before these other reservations um, end time and you know the others start time is before these end time then they overlap this is correct so there is one thing that i don't like is this plus two hours so let me do something here let me create a method here let's go back up here yes so why don't we create here let's create here a start time which is going to be date time to local time yeah and let's create a field local time yeah so this is final and let's also create another one end time okay and this end time let's see if copilot gives oh amazing awesome 
So again, you know, this is a value that is hard coded. I mean, maybe let's just do this and call it, it's gonna be a field declaration. Let's just call it default du uh, reservation duration, okay? In hours. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, so it's a bit better. We don't have a magic number. So now let's add a, so let's generate a getter. Yeah, for these two, okay. Get start time and get end time, perfect. So now let's see, let's test Copilot, see if you can generate this implementation based on start and end time. Let's see if you can do that. Look at that, Loteria magic. Amazing. All right, so this is cool. So I think for now, what I'm going to do is disable the copilot completion. So you come here and just do disable completions. Okay. All right, so now it is disabled. So let's implement this ourselves. I mean, we've got to do some coding, right? Okay, so let's create a list of reservations. Let's call overlapping reservations. Okay, let's create a new array list, right? And this is gonna contain all the, you know, reservations that overlap with this one, okay? So for each reservation R in the reservations set, okay? If the reservations start time, okay? is after the, let me create here a field, a local time, yeah, which I'm gonna call start time, which is a date time. Yes, local time and another local time, end time, which is date time. So this will be start time plus, plus two hours, okay? Now, this is not, too good I would like to reservation to actually give that to us okay so reservation let's say get and time given a date time okay oh there is already an end time so get and time from okay all right, so in this, it's just basically going to do date time to local time and then plus the hours default is static. So now if this reservation start time is after, you know, the end time, then we can break from this loop. So otherwise, we're just going to say if this reservation intersects with All right, so notice that the intersects with takes a reservation, but you know, we can actually overload this, you know, with the other local time, start time, and local time, end time, okay? So this is end time, and other start time. All right, so now we have the start time, and the end time. So if it intersects with that, we're going to overlap, we're going to add it to the this reservation to that list. Okay, so now that we have the overlapping reservations, which again is the list of all the reservations that overlap or intersect with, you know, this date time, basically start time and end time, let's implement the algorithm. All right, so let's use an iteration loop, overlapping reservations size, Okay, so in here, let's get a reservation, let's call R1, which is overlapping reservations get I. Okay, and we have to initialize this total party size is going to be R1 party size plus the party size of the new reservation that we're trying to reserve. Okay, so then let's create our subset. Okay, again, overlapping reservations size. Okay, and obviously here we need to look ahead, so I plus one. 
and we're going to do the, this. So if actually let me get the uh, reservation here, R2, which is overlapping reservations, get J. Okay. So now here I can do the comparison. So if R2 intersects with R1, okay, if that's true, then I'm going to update the total party size, R2 get party size, and then here I just need to do the, my check. So if total party size, okay, is greater than the restaurant capacity, then I just return false, okay. Here I return true. Okay, so we have his capacity exceeded implemented. Let's re-enable Copilot. All right, so now we have our reservation system implemented, our restaurant manager implemented. Let's generate unit tests. I don't want to make this video super long, so let's generate unit tests for the simple class restaurant manager. I will leave this an exercise for the for the viewer to generate the reservation system implementation unit tests. All right, so we have this class open. Let's go here and then just say, let's just use the option forward slash tests. Okay. This is open this class restaurant manager. So hopefully it's aware of the context. Yeah, as you can see, it's fully aware of the context. And notice I just said tests. I didn't even ask for JUnit tests, JUnit 5 tests. And I think that's what it is doing. Not too crazy about these underscores. Okay, so reference, it uses restaurant manage impl. Let's see. Okay, it uses Mukito as well. That's interesting. And it's using JUnit5. Okay, so it's using a field and it's every for every test it is creating a new instance. So what is it doing here? It's adding a restaurant and asserting that add restaurant with in with valid input it is created address with invalid capacity throws an exception address with invalid okay add modify all right so this is a little bit so first of all let's say okay i wonder if i can do fix fix problems and compile errors i'm not sure if this will do that so basically re-implement the the test using camel case okay this is not you know c plus plus all right, so then, yeah, let's just do that. All right, so now it fixed the method names. I've noticed that the, let's see, at restaurant, validate restaurant. Okay, let's see. All right, so what I wanted it to do in the case where, so if the restaurant would valid input. Okay, so I actually wanted it to add a JUnit5 parameterized test, okay, to validate all the invalid input meters. So let's see if you can do that. All right, so it's done generating. Let's see what it came up with. So he created a parameterized test with a method source. Again, he's using this, you know, underscore naming, but that's fine. I'll fix that. And it's okay every single parameter that it's passed it's going to throw an illegal argument exception while trying to add restaurant and let's see if it covers all the cases so it's covering a null name with everything then it's trying the null address then the invalid zero capacity and then so on and so forth null open null close and null list and then okay so this is all for nulls and then what is it doing here all right so it's using the wrong local time where this is created the open is created and the close and here it's the case where the uh, dates closure dates are in the past so let's see whether it forgot anything no, I think it cover everything. That's awesome. So yeah, let's get this guy. Okay, let's copy this. So let's come here. How to generate a test. Forgot shortcut. Okay, create a test class. 
restaurant manage impl yeah let's not implement anything because obviously we want to use copilot's implementation okay fix those imports yeah the package got max messed up let's just come here and fix it okay so let's add gunit5 to the class path okay so if you open the pom xml you will see that intellij added you just need to fix the imports restaurant get name yeah let's create this method there all right so we said that all these invalid methods let's replace them with the uh, copilot's um, parameterized test that we ask it to do. Okay, let's. Mm, I can't do insert. So this is where it's a little bit, you know, disruptive to have to come to this window. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's paste. Probably have this is there. Okay, I don't need this. Okay, obviously need to fix these imports. Let's fix these imports. Okay, I'm not sure why. Okay, maybe we have to... IntelliJ got a bit confused, so let's see. Open. Usually op helps when you open the... Yeah. Okay, if we go back there, then hopefully IntelliJ... Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we have, again, let's just remove this. I wonder if it's... Let's try IntelliJ to do it. Awesome. Okay. So, the validate inputs has been thoroughly tested, I think, for invalid parameters. And we're adding a restaurant. We're asserting it's not null. That's okay. I mean, we don't need to be super fancy with this. Modify, we have add restaurant, modify restaurant, and then assert not null, new ID, and assert not equals. Okay, so this implementation is basically creating a new ID for a modified restaurant. It's okay. And then remove restaurant with existing restaurant removes restaurant what we add a restaurant and then we remove it okay so this method is a little bit okay and then get rest of the existing restaurant returns restaurant yeah I mean I would rename these methods but I mean for the purpose of this generation it's okay so we are adding a restaurant and then we're using its ID to do a lookup on the restaurant manage, assert not null, and assert equals the name. I mean, again, this would probably, we would add additional fields here, right? Not just that. So if you look at the, if you look at the restaurant. All right, so let's run this and assert that, all, that this passes. All right, so we have some failures here. Let's take a look what's going on. So the parameterized test are the ones that are generating errors and the error is an expected exception type thrown. It's expecting a legal argument exception where it was NPE. Okay. Right. So let's see at restaurant if it fails. Oh, we're gonna have to go there on validating puts. Yeah. So notice that this is throwing a null pointer exceptions and those ones are throwing an illegal argument exception. All right, so let's see how we can fix this. So a simple way to fix it is to actually parameterize the exception as well, right? Instead of having it here, we can parameterize exception class. And this is going to be a field here. So class is going to be an exception. And let's call it exception class. And obviously here we have to add the exception, okay? So let's use a great feature of IntelliJ called column edit mode, column selection mode, not column edit. Okay, now it's on. And let's add it to all of them. Okay. And this is going to be a null pointer exception class. Okay. Now let's exit column selection mode. 
so obviously for the the last two cases here it's actually the legal argument exception not an NPE legal argument exception and we have another case for the capacity which is this case here so let's rerun this and see all right all tests pass and all parameterized tests pass i mean obviously we could have improved the coverage especially obviously for the um, you know reservation system it's missing tests all right, so before we end, let's just quickly show you how you can quickly generate documentation, Java docs for these classes. So reservation system, let's open the chat. And here, you know, forward slash doc. So it should generate nice Java docs for this class. Okay, so you see it generates Java docs for, you know, all the methods and the class as well. Okay. So this is not very useful. I would have expected it to, you know, add a little bit more color, particularly around the constraints of the system. Um, but there you have it. So let me select reservation system. Actually, let's see if you can do a better job. Um, add detailed Java docs for the class only. Uh, explain the uh, constraints of the reservation system let's see if it does a better job with this prompt all right this is better yeah okay so let's just stop that yeah so i mean with a better prompt we got a better you know java doc okay so before we go let's get the this method here the method that is you know more complicated of reservation system, which is where we have the, you know, yeah, is capacity exceeded. So again, the cursor is here. Let's go to copilot and let's just do forward slash explain. See if you can explain what this method does. Because remember, we implemented this ourselves without using copilot. All right, so we didn't quite add reservation. Okay, it's explain. Okay, fine, it's doing the whole class. I thought it will be aware of the of the where the cursor is. So let's just say maybe I can do explain and then I put the method name. Okay. Okay, so it's a nice explanation. I mean a bit superficial, but there you have it. So but it's breaking down the method in you know in logical processing steps and then explaining each, right? So this block is just where we get reservations by ID and do the null check and return false. Here, okay, this is where we initialize the local variables. So we got another, you know, chunk of logic there grouped in a logical way. And here is where we get the uh, overlapping reservations. And then finally, let's see what he, what he said about it. The method checks if the total party size of the overlapping reservations, including the new reservation, would exceed the restaurant's capacity. If it does, the true, is true, indicating the reservation would exceed, otherwise it returns false. Okay. All right, this ends this very long video. I hope you got a nice taste of how to use GitHub Copilot chat and auto completion within IntelliJ. I'm Nilton from craftofprogramming.com. Thanks for watching.